This is Nightline, your open door to people and places, and this is Walter O'Keefe. Nightline invites you to listen in on NBC's award-winning science fiction series, X-1. Now escape to a world of the future. Countdown for blast off. X minus five, four, three, two, X minus one, fire. the far horizons of the unknown come tales of new dimensions in time and space. These are stories of the future, adventures in which you'll live in a million could be years on a thousand maybe worlds. The National Broadcasting Company, in cooperation with Galaxy Science Fiction Magazine, presents X minus one. Tonight, A Wind is Rising by Finn O'Donovan. But first, hear this. Now, X minus one. And tonight's story, A Wind is Rising. I'd only been on Corella for eight months. Not long for a seasoned, advanced exploration man like myself, but long enough to know one thing. Before long, I was going to kill me a native Corellan. Maybe I was a little edgy. When you have to live inside a steel and concrete capsule just listening to that fantastic wind howl 24 hours a day, it begins to get you. Anyway, it started when Smanek, he was our Corellan radio man, came up to my quarters to get me. Corellans are a dirty brown and look something like big spiders with five hairy tentacles. Yeah? Manic Earthman. Well? Other Earthman tells Manic, tell this Earthman, come pretty quick. Okay. You got lump sugar. What for? Manic, do something favor, get lump sugar. No, I don't have sugar. Now beat it. Maybe you got dead meat? Smanek like dead meat. No, no meat. Now get your slimy shape out of Clayton. here. Yeah, what's wrong? Come on down with me. Clayton, I don't think it's good to insult these Corellans. They have no feelings, you know that. They have no emotional nervous setup. Just the same, I don't think it's good. For who? For you. When you insult somebody by your own standards, you hurt yourself. Even if the object of your insult is a dead thing. Now look, Nereshev, I'm an advanced exploration expert. You're an anthropologist. You stick to your stuff, and I'll stick to mine. Sorry. Now, what's the fuss about? The water faucet. What about it? It isn't running. What? I pounded it and put a probe in. It must be blocked out at the storage tank. How could it be blocked out there? I don't know. Maybe the wind rolled a boulder at it. Yeah. More likely one of those spiders like Smanek was fiddling with it. The natives have been told not to tamper with the water line. They don't like us. They might. I thought you said they were incapable of feeling like or dislike or any emotion. I did. I know they can't feel, but... Still, somehow I get the sensation that they resent us. I'm glad we've only got one of them inside the station. Regardless of that, we can't live with our water supply cut off. Oh, listen to that wind. It'll be murder out there. I'll go. It's my turn. You wouldn't know what to do if you got there. It seems quite simple. Well, come to think of it, it could be a two-man job if there's a boulder. The wind gauge reads 82 miles an hour. <laughs> Just a light breeze on Corella. Maybe we ought to wait till it drops a little. Let's ask the gink. Why do we take him along? The gink? Well, he knows the terrain, and like all his kind, he's a fantastic sailor. But they take those woven land boats out in 100-mile winds with no qualms at all. The brew 14 tons, and it has a diesel engine. We don't need any sailors. If we have to use a steadying sail, I can handle it as well as any spider man. 
Just a suggestion. Well, you stick to anthropology. Open the locks and we'll get the brood out. I need Smonik to close the locks after us. Smonik! It's man call. Clayton and I are going out in the heavy land car. What's the weather going to be like? Wind come up along little more. Not anything to be afraid. He got sugar. Oh, here you are, Smonik. Very good sailing today. You got sail on truck. We have a steadying sail made of steel. Woven reeds. More better. A more easy time. We know all about that. Open the lock, Nereshev. The brute, as we called it, was armored like a tank and streamlined. It had vision slits of shatterproof glass, and most of its 14 tons were centered near the ground. It was sealed from dust and had six giant tires made of woven steel mesh. It was built to take the rocky terrain of the planet Corella and navigate in the gale force winds that battered the planet. I strapped myself into the cockpit, and we were ready. The wind indicator told me that the winds had risen to 94 miles an hour and rising. You're listening to A Wind is Rising, tonight's attraction on X-1. Time, night time. The lights dim down for the curtain in theaters on Broadway. A Hollywood star greets the first guests at her party in Beverly Hills. In Chicago, the police plan to close the ring on a band of desperate criminals. At a world-famous circus in Paris, France, the star trapeze artist climbs to a precarious perch high over the center ring. In a Las Vegas nightclub, a hush falls over the tables as one of the great singing stars of our time steps out onto the stage. And in New York's Radio City, the studio warning light flashes, stand by. Nightline is about to go on the air, taking you to wherever in the country, wherever in the world, exciting things are happening at night to make you more than a spectator, to make you a participant in these events. This is Walter O'Keefe inviting you to join us on Nightline. You're aligned to exciting entertainment at night every Monday through Thursday night over most of these NBC stations. Now back to X-1 and a wind is rising. I looked out over the instrument panel... The Corella station had been set down like an overturned bowl on a rocky plain. In order to get to the water storage tank, we had to travel six miles. Immediately around the station were our boulder baffles, huge spikes of concrete designed to stop the boulders that the wind rolled off the mountains. I shoved the brute into gear, and we were on our way. Hang on, Nereshev. Here we go. The wind is up to 97. Do you suppose we're in for a storm? The gink said it was fine sailing weather. For a Corellan, maybe. Well, this baby can take it. You see the pipeline yet? The sand is pretty thick in the vision glass. We... There it is. About two points on the starboard bow. Uh, I see it now. What's our speed? Three miles an hour. Give us a little more oxygen in here. All right. Hey, there's something coming toward us. Looks like a boulder. Hard right. <laughs> That was no boulder. That was one of those ginks out for a sail in his land ship. Playful, aren't they? Next one scares us like that, I'll shoot him, so help me. I don't understand how they can sail those flimsy ships on those wooden rollers. What's our wind speed now? 102 miles an hour. I think it's going to be a storm, Clay. Well, there's no point in turning back now. We can't live without water. I'm game if you are. What's the strongest storm we've ever recorded? Well, let's see. In the eight months we've been here, about 168 miles an hour. Well, this baby was built to navigate up to 200. We'll be all right. We had had two storms on Corella since Earthmen had been there. The first one had almost wiped out the station. That's why the boulder traps were built. 
The second one had leveled an entire mountain range on the other end of the plain. By the time we reached the water storage tanks, the wind was up to 113 miles an hour. Well, this is it. One of us has got to put on an air suit and repair the damage. Means blowing out the line. It's my turn. (laughs) What do you know about mechanical things? I'll go out. Fasten that nylon rope to me and winch it as I go along. I'll anchor the brute in the lee of the concrete breaker. Maybe you ought to wait till the wind dies down. It isn't dying down, it's rising. We can radio Smanic at the station and get a report. <laughs> you think you'll give us a straight answer? I trust him. Hello, Smanic. This is Nereshev calling Smanic. This Smanic, Earthman. How long is this wind going to keep up? Long time. Maybe even longer. More than two hours? Yes. Okay. Clayton is going out to fix the pipe. We'll be back in an hour if everything holds. Okay. Well, I'm ready. Lock my helmet. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Open the chamber. Here I go. Outside, the wind thundered and roared like breaking surf. Once I was almost blown free, but the line held. By the time I crawled back into the ship, I'd cleared the water lines, but my suit was shredded and my air extractor was clogged with dust. The wind was up to 145 miles an hour and still rising. You all right? Yeah. All right, let's get this thing going. It's starting to shiver in the wind. Right. What's wrong? I can't start the engine. Here, let me try. Mm, Sand. Sand in the bearings, in the injectors, every place. She'll never start. Good grief. Well, we'll have to sail her back. What? I said we'll have to sail her back. At wind speeds like this? It'll be like sailing a little dinghy across the Atlantic in a gale. Well, what else can we do? Put out the auxiliary anchor and ride it out. No, no, no. One good boulder and we'd be goners. Come on, raise the sail. Okay. Release anchors. Hang on. Here we go. We raised the steel sail and tacked into the wind. Shoved by a wind that had now reached 175 miles an hour, the 14-ton brute soon picked up to a speed of 40 miles an hour. Even reefed down and heeled over, I couldn't hold her. And I had to winch out the steel main sheet to straighten her up. Then it began to happen. The thing we feared the most. What's that? The wind is tossing rocks at us. Well, as long as we're not capsized, we'll be okay. She's healing at 45 now. It's no problem. So rock smash the visor. Put on your oxygen mask. Wait. Now, if it'll just bite in. 
I think we're anchored. But listen to those boulders. We won't last ten minutes anchored here. Move over. Why? I'm going to try the diesel again. I don't know, maybe it's a long shot, but maybe. It's caught. It's caught. Come on, baby, start. Start! That's it. She's running. She's running. All right, let's go to that anchor. Warm up that coffee, Smanek. We're coming in. Somehow the engine coughed and spit us back to the station. The boulder defense was completely flattened, and one side of the capsule was dented by a huge rock. But otherwise it was still holding. The winds were up to 212 miles an hour at the time. A dozen Corellan land ships were moored by their long vines on the lee side of the station, and more ships were coming in every minute. We slid into the tube and entered the capsule. Welcome, Earthmen. You have nice sail. Shut up, you crummy gink. Earthmen not pleased. You told us the weather would hold. Old Corellan saying, one can predict weather, but not do something about it. Very true. Yeah. We almost died out there. You wouldn't have been planning anything like that, would you? Schmanek, no understand. No? Well, do you understand this? Uh. Now get out of here. Get out before I blow your ugly head off with this gun. Very difficult for Smanek to be without head. Impossible to eat sugar or dead meat for almost three weeks before new head grow. Smanek, join his people now for summer festival. Now you do that. Pronto. Wait a minute, Smanek. Did you say summer festival? Oh, yes. Ancient Karelian festival. When summer ends... We go sail away to caverns in far west. Caverns? Yes. We live in caverns for three months. In that way, we have safety. Safety? From what? From winds. After summer is over, come winter storms. First storm of year about to start any moment now. About to start? What do you call what we've been having? The, the wind is 238 miles an hour right now. The brute's ruined, the boulder defense is leveled, the foundations are cracked. Very regrettable. Perhaps you like to come stay with us in caverns. Bring sugar. Impossible. We need oxygen, food, our own water. Very regrettable indeed. Well, maybe you don't stay and colonize our planet after all. Ah, yes, Really big wind starting to rise now. Smanak, go. Goodbye, Smanak. Thanks for your help. Smanak, do favor. Glad to help. You got sugar? Fred Collins again, and I'll have another word for you about X-1 in a moment. If that's the game you're missing because of a mean cold, here's something you should know. Every second someone takes it for the miseries of a cold. Millions more take bromoquinine. Every second someone takes it for the miseries of a cold. Bromoquinine. More people have taken more bromoquinine cold tablets for more complete relief than any other cold tablet ever sold. You could take aspirin or other single-action cold remedies all day and not get bromoquinine's more complete relief, even for virus colds. Bromoquinine works to relieve stuffy nose, body aches, fever, irregularity, the blues, and headache. More complete relief, because bromoquinine is the only cold tablet sold with wonder-working quinine and five other medicines, health-fortified with vitamin C. Remember... Every second someone takes it for the miseries of a cold. Millions more take bromoquinine. Get bromoquinine brand cold tablets. You have just heard X-1, 
presented by the National Broadcasting Company in cooperation with Galaxy Science Fiction Magazine, which this month features Finn O'Donovan's story, Gray Flannel Armor, which makes you wonder if knights would have been still more bold in days of old if they'd had transistor amulets. Galaxy Magazine, on your newsstand today. X-1 has brought you A Wind is Rising, a story from the pages of Galaxy, written by Finn O'Donovan and adapted for radio by George Lefferts. Featured in our cast were Les Damon as Clayton, Bert Cowlin as Nereshev, and William Griffiths as Smanik. This is Fred Collins. X-1 was directed by George Vutsas and is an NBC Radio Network production. There's excitement in the air at night, and Nightline brings it to you. Hear Nightline with Walter O'Keefe next on most of these NBC stations. <laughs> 